Who would have thought that a simple functioning messaging app, WhatsApp, that was founded in the year 2009 would be this big and popular as of today. With its ease of use, it gathers almost 2 billion users across the world every single day. Among its competitors, WhatsApp is the only messaging app that does not run ads, doesn't charge their users through fees or membership, and they don't sell your data with an awesome feature of end-to-end -end encryption for privacy. But how do they maintain their operating expenses despite the free service that they provide. Before we discuss how WhatsApp earns or how they make money, we must first know what the app itself is and its history. Welcome to the Business Rundown. And in this video, to further understand WhatsApp, we'll take a deeper look into the application WhatsApp. Curious to know? Let's find out. There were two founders behind the innovation of WhatsApp in February 2009, and they were Brian Acton and Jan Coe, former employees of Yahoo. Coem's ideas in the same year was not intended to develop the app as a messaging app, but a status update app whose main functions is that it would provide dynamic information and would show statuses for each person. Coem's aim conclude his idea to name the app WhatsApp as it sounds like, what's up? But this innovation led to his first downfall in the same year. In the same month of launching the app, early versions of WhatsApp kept crashing, meaning there are lots of errors and bugs that make the app non-functional. This led Coem to consider giving up and looking for a new job because the early startup company WhatsApp Inc. produced a failed prototype on its early stage. But his co-founder, Acting, confronted him and encouraged him to wait a few more months. A few months had passed, their innovation continuously evolved as their integration of the new features into the app, such as users that will get a notification when a user updated or changed his or her status. And also in August of 2009, WhatsApp 2.0 was launched and another added feature of messaging component, wherein users can now interact or message remotely by using the app. Due to this innovation, their active users in 2009 increased to 250,000, and this led to an investment opportunity for them as Acton, the co-founder, persuaded his Yahoo friends and co-workers to invest. It got their investment in WhatsApp and invested $250,000 in seed funding. During the same year after the beta stage was done, they launched the official WhatsApp in the App Store exclusively for iPhone in November. Then in 2010, due to the development of the app with its launch on both Symbian OS and Android OS, this gave interest to Google to propose multiple acquisition offers, meaning they offered WhatsApp Inc. huge amounts of money to buy their company and product WhatsApp. But WhatsApp Inc. declined all those offers. Moreover, WhatsApp didn't anticipate this huge amount volume of users, which cost them an insane amount of operating expenses to cover these costs of sending verification texts to its users. They changed their WhatsApp free service into a paid one charging $1 per customer to download their application, and then $1 a year going forward. This was the recuperating strategy of WhatsApp to earn their revenue in late 2010. Despite their app being a paid one and not totally free, in early 2011, they were one of the top 20 apps in the US Apple Store, which enticed Sequoia Capital, and it invested about $8 million for more than 15% of WhatsApp. And two years after, on 2013, when WhatsApp had about 20 million active users and 50 staff members, Sequoia invested again, amounting to $50 million, which increased the value of WhatsApp to around $1.5 billion. But despite its paid services, which are claimed to have 400 million active users, it incurred $130 million in losses in 2013. Then in the year 2014, the formerly known Facebook Inc. and now called Meta Platforms, Meta for short, acquired WhatsApp for 19 billion US dollars. And days after the announcement of the acquisition, the users of WhatsApp experienced a loss of service, which led to their anger across social media and caused them to move to other messaging services such as Telegram and Line, which are WhatsApp's 
direct competitors. Facebook's revision of charges and fees to WhatsApp was among the CEO Mark Zuckerberg's vision, which was stated in the TechCrunch article that said to develop a group of basic internet services that would be free of charge to use. A 911 for the internet, Zuckerberg said. And that statement is really happening as WhatsApp continues to be developed by Meta Company, integrating voice calls, another feature that proves it's not just a messaging app. In 2015, voice calls between two accounts successfully launched into the app, increasing the users in an exponential growth with 900 million users in September of 2015. Yes, I know guys, that is quite confusing. I stated earlier that WhatsApp provides free services and charges no fees to its users. Let me explain. But before that, just a quick break. If you are watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Getting back to WhatsApp, in January of 2016, Jan Kuum, WhatsApp co-founder, announced that it would no longer charge its users at all, thus removing the $1 download fee and subscription fee of $1 annually. This turns WhatsApp into a completely free messaging platform, which is the result of their effort to remove a barrier for those who face problems because some users don't have payment cards. It was also stated by the WhatsApp company that they would not display or run any third-party ads and would include new features to communicate with businesses. In the same year, constant development led to the integration of two-factor authentication for Android users which is another type of security protection for users' accounts. Two-factor is a type of strict verification process wherein the code for the authentication is crucial to be able to open the account. Without the code, no one can access the account regardless that they have the confidential information such as username and password. Following the year, 2017 co-founder Brian Acton decided to leave the company to start a non-profit group which was later revealed that he started a competitor of WhatsApp named Signal by Signal Foundation. The following year in 2018, CEO and the other founder Jan Kuum decided to leave due to privacy, monetization, and advertising concerns by Facebook slash Meta. Although former founders have left the company, Meta, or Facebook, continues to develop the app. In late September of 2018, the app introduced group audio and video call features, and a month later, Swipe to Reply was integrated. In 2020, up to the present features of WhatsApp continue to be evolved, leading into 2 billion WhatsApp users every single month, almost 13 million times downloaded in August 2022, whereby 2 million of the downloads come from the WhatsApp business app, and the app is available in more than 180 countries, which was used in 60 different languages. In addition to this, the biggest market of WhatsApp in India, which records 487.5 million users and messages sent in WhatsApp daily was 100 billion messages every day. Insane amount of messages daily. These statistics were provided by Oberlo based in Statistica 2019 and TechCrunch 2020. Moreover, 53% of WhatsApp users in the United States use the app at least once a day, although not as popular as Facebook Messenger, but the usage of the app is pretty frequent. Provided by this information, WhatsApp is truly an amazing technology, specifically a messaging application. With its unique features and services such as no ads or third-party software that runs into the app, avoids annoyance into the user user as some applications have pop-up ads. It's a totally free app, which Meta removes the subscription fee for users. And last, no data breach, as end-to-end encryption was established into the app, and only the sender and receiver can read the messages, preventing potential eavesdroppers such as hackers or malicious actors to bypass your messages. The innovation of the product is fascinating for an ease of use for its users. And with that being 
said, it's time to end our video. But before we do that, we'd like to know what are your insights regarding WhatsApp? Are you one of its users? And are you happy and satisfied with the services provided by the app? Or maybe not? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if it benefited you and make sure to turn on those notifications and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos just like this. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.